Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special presentation for you today. We are very pleased to welcome Jacques Attali, the president of the Fondation Positive Planet and founder of EBRD, to speak to you today. Our special moderator for this panel will be Elvis Cotheria, managing director of the Elite Travel Group. Uh, Mr. Cotheria, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brian. Uh, thank you, Mr. Attali. It's, uh, it's, we are honored to have you on uh, this conference. And uh, I consider this as the most uh, prominent moment for our conference because we have one of the most br brilliant mind uh, global with a global influence like you. And I'm, I'm, I'm kindly of a, a followers of you, a student of yours for a long time. So uh, I'm really emotional today to let you explain. And then um, I want to address a question first. And uh, the, my question is, what are the important lessons learned from the COVID-19? Because you have a lot of experience in that. Thank you very much. Of the, you, you may know that I'm a great friend of uh, your country, where I've been coming quite often. I am a great fan of your prime minister, even if I don't want to be involved in the Albanian politics. <laughs> but, yes, Eddie, we know. Yeah. but Eddie is a very close friend of mine and uh, I wish him and your country the best. And I hope I can come back to see you uh, very soon <laughs> and even to, to swim in, in your sea. Uh, <laughs> very soon. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> Pandemic is still there and will be there as long as we don't have a vaccine and drugs around the world. <clears throat> That's why the cost of the pandemic is huge, mainly for the poor, the poorer countries, as well as the poor in the developed countries. The uh, economic cost of it will be huge. We may hope that 21, 2021 will be better than 2020 because of the vaccine <clears throat> and uh, according to the most uh, positive scenario, there will be a growth of the GDP of a world of more than 4% next year, uh, which will be a, a way to uh, um, fill the gap of uh, this year. No, no more than fill the gap, and, and even not fill the gap. The US will fill the gap in one year. <clears throat> the Chinese have already filled the gap, and Europeans will fill the gap in two or three years if the vaccine works. If it's well uh, logistically spread, if each country, including Albania, can have it in due time. If there are problems in uh, deploying the vaccine, or if the vaccine doesn't work, or if any reason create bugs, then we may have huge problems. And everything is linked to the efficiency of the logistics, efficiency and efficiency of the logistics of the vaccine. Yeah. And um, how do you see the future of tourism? Um, is there a lot to change? Should we only focus on tourism or diversify our economy? You know, I, I explain in a book, which I think is on the process of being translated into Albanian, uh, called Economy of Life in French, where I explain that uh, we should all move towards the development of specific sectors which have appeared in this crisis to be more important than any others. Health, hygiene, education, culture, food, agriculture, digitals, clear, clean, uh, clean water, uh, waste management, uh, um, uh, renewable energy, and some other sectors. Uh, obviously, in my views, uh, as it is today, tourism is not part of economy of life, but uh, even if it's not part, I, that doesn't mean that it will not develop in two directions. One, it is possible that after the crisis, people go back to uh, square one and live as it was before. And they want to do what was done in one century ago after the, uh, sp the Spanish flu or so-called Spanish flu, and that led to a catastrophe with coming back to the same system and what was called the Roaring Twenties where people were doing a lot of mistakes. That's possible and that, that will lead to the same kind of uh, short-term short-termism and, 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 and mistakes. Uh, but I think that there is a huge potential for tourism if it's called differently and if we move differently. In, in my view, the most important ideological change of this crisis 
is to make people understand the importance of altruism, the importance of helping the others as a, a rational way of helping himself, if, if yourself. Education uh, and uh, health and all the sectors I mentioned are altruistic sectors where I have a specific interest in being altruistic. And it's also the case of tourism, which I should, I prefer to name hospitality. Yes. If you change the name of tourism into hospitality, then you have a totally different vision of what tourism is about. It's not only packing people in a specific place to take two minutes to visit a museum, but really to spend time uh, and using tourism, uh, hospitality as a way to uh, spend a lot of time, to uh, use even the techniques of uh, uh, hospitality for hospitals, for education, even for headquarters of companies. The values of tourism linked to the value of hospitality could be great values for other sectors. That's why I think if you call that, uh, and you can coin a sentence, Albania is a country of hospitality, then you may ring a bell around the world. I see, yeah. So this is quite interesting and because hospitality is far wider and then it includes all, 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 includes all you have said. And uh, just want to, because we are interested, what is your message for youth in Elbasan, in Albania, in Albania and Elbasan particularly for their parents and teachers too? Mm. Are we too late to change things? No, 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 we are a young country. You are the crossroads of many places. You are very well placed around the world. Uh, I say to the young people, study, learn, go to school as long as you can. Uh, try to find what you are good at. Do it, work hard, uh, develop your grit, which is in my view, the best quality, the most important quality, the grit means motivation. Uh, the, the will of doing things. And if you have a, a education and grit, no, nothing will resist to you. Do not despair. Uh, the future is wonderful ahead. <laughs> what about the, the parents? What is the parent, role of parents? Because th this is what we are bringing here. Well, you know, when, what I, when, when I mentioned altruism as a key quality, uh, that's after all, the main role of parents is to be altruistic for their children. Uh, to consider that it's their role to uh, sacrifice even something for their children if they can, and it's good for themselves. Um, uh, Groucho Marx said, why should I work for, why should I care about next generations? They have done nothing for me, which is, which is funny, but silly. Yeah. Because uh, next generations are useful, not only because they are going to help uh, old people, but think about a minute, if we don't have anyone anymore alive, and, and born, that means that it will be a nightmare for everyone here. And then we have a strong interest, the parents have a strong interest in the success of their children, a strong selfish interest, not only to be proud of them, but rationally they have a strong interest. And therefore we should develop this concept of rational altruism, and then the parents should do their best. And then they will realize if they do not do that naturally, but it's an immense joy to be useful, not only for these, uh, their children, and we should consider that all the children of Albania are also their own children. Yes, you're absolutely right. And to be honest, I will share my own, my own experience. For example, by the, by, the, by, the, by the history, I see that my grandfather told me, told to my father that it's, not, it's your turn to change things. My father left it to me. So personally me, but also, also the authorities in our city have decided to, to change now for our kids because our further generation has said, why us? But now in, in our city, we have a commitment. Yes, we will do that. We will sacrifice to change now. So our kids will have a brighter future. So this is the le lessons I learned from your, your uh, theory of transhumanism, which is a reality now. Huh? Hyper democracy and things which you, you I mean, uh, that's why I, I'm proud to say I'm your student because you have inspired people. Thank this you is very a, much. a message, and, uh, and uh, also we want, I mean, uh, I, I need your, your support also for teachers. What is your, uh, what is the role of the teacher now? The role of a teacher is first to learn. 
because the teachers should, should be good teachers. And for that, they have to learn, to learn every day, to improve their knowledge, not to transmit uh, old and obsolete uh, uh, knowledge on anything. They have to learn all the time and not enough teachers are learning. They should learn more and more and they should try to develop in their students the trust, not to punish, but just develop the trust. Uh, we, uh, and that means for respect. You should respect your students and then respect, trust. And in order to do that, a, a teacher should be a good teacher. For that, he should be a knowledgeable teacher. If a students or the uh, children understand that the, the teacher is also learning in order, in order to be a better teacher, then he will be respected. I see. So, and uh, the last but not least, this is my last question uh, to kick out I and mean, to make this. Uh, we, we will be back to where we were before pandemic. Do you think it's a... Uh... I, I, I hope not, uh, because if we are back, that means that we have forgotten uh, to take, to draw the lessons uh, out of this crisis. And the main lesson is, please be prepared to the next one. It's why I would advise you to do the following research for you, your family, your city, and your country. Try to think of Albania 2035, or you, Elvis, 2035, or your children, 2035. Look at, look at the chances, the threats, and be prepared. And try to prepare to, be, to do your best for your company, for your city, for your country, to face the threats that you will have identified yes this is absolutely great and then yeah i'm, I'm really honored and then uh, yes fully i mean emotional to hear this because i see a lot of engagement to be honest with you uh, before uh, two sessions before you we had uh, a person uh, to address albeism and uh, was a person full of energy and there we will start to move and empower that kind of because there we can get inspirations and uh, so, I mean, we need sources of inspiration. So you are one source of inspiration where you can really influence. And um, that's why we needed you si since your, uh, so I think uh, your, your help is very vital for us to, to address our challenges. But I don't, I don't see any trouble. And we have a good, uh, in our city, we have a commitment. In 2025, we have Elbasan Digital, which is uh, already a reality from the authorities, we have created a committee when we see a lot of engagement and a lot of uh, positive things. So uh, uh, digitalization is part of that, but it's more empowerment and uh, it's, a, it's a society building in that sense. That is what we are. My, my last word is to congratulate you for everything you do and you are going to do in the future. And once more, never give up the hope of becoming a member of the European Union. Never give up. You are going to do that. You are going to succeed in that. And I would be, it will be my, my, my uh, proudness to, be, uh, to help you to do that. We, we will do that. We are on that way. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you for you your time. Me. And uh, wish you good, uh, good health and thanks for all your, you have done for us. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. We would like to give a special thanks to Mr. Atali for being here today. It has been an honor. We would also like to thank Mr. Kothelia for the moderation.